fast. Yahoo! Calling this thing just fast probably really, really, really undersells it, considering it's more mobile than it is fast, and there is a difference. I consider fast to just be your top speed and your acceleration. But mobility is a mix of speed, acceleration, adding onto that rotation speed and power to weight ratio. And this thing's rotation speed and power to weight ratio is so good, you can spin full 360s on not like 30 degree downhills. And it's even better on Glacier because of the slippery surface. And it's even, even better if someone notices when you're doing it. Let's, let's see who we can, uh, <laughs> what is that T-50 doing? It's just like rotating, going down. That is accomplished through handbrake turning. You can handbrake turn by default by using the spacebar and turning, and that's pretty much it. It goes like that for any racing games you may have played. It's also very useful for taking turns sharper than you normally would, because sometimes it's just driving around, sometimes you can get into a bush faster, which saves quite a bit of time, but instead of driving straight into it and then doing a little wiggle around to get into the bush faster. Also, it can be used when you're attacking someone. You can use it to take the turn a little sharper, so that you can flank them a little easier to just get around them, and this is a big thing for later. Also, you can use it to flex your driving skills on some scrubs and E25s who think they can just drive straight at you and ram you. Among a couple other tanks that, you know, will just sometimes straight up bum rush you every single time. <coughs> No, actually. It's pretty good. This is every single tier 5 tank ranked by DPM, or at least the top 30. And here is the T-50. That's 25th, by the way. Which doesn't sound that good, right? Until you consider something. Almost all of the tanks here are either howitzers or tank destroyers, with some tanks that are actually having insane amounts of DPM because they're a rapid fire gun or a high alpha gun that isn't a howitzer. The 25th doesn't look so bad at this point. Under the conditions of no howitzers or tank destroyers, it goes from 25th to 12th, which is quite the jump. This is also measuring off of only armor piercing standard rounds or just the standard rounds you can buy for credits that isn't high explosive out of any of these tanks. Here's all the light tanks sorted out by DPM. And I'm just gonna make the executive decision to rule out the Covenanter because that's not really a light tank or at least it's not gonna be used as one. Once we do that, the T-50 moves up to second in DPM. But I told you I was gonna tell you about this gun on the A-20 before. See this gun is not really a great gun. It's got 46 standard pen and it fires off five shells at once. It's the gun that's really good on the T46 at tier three, but we're not at tier three with this tank. It used to be tier four, it was okay at tier four. Now it's at tier five and that's not that good at tier five. I think it has HE, which I think is hilarious, but it also the premium pen is like 63. The standard pen on the T-50 is 90. So basically it's a gun that has more DPM, but if a Hellcat can effectively side scrape against it, I'm not gonna count it. So T-50, number one. Hey, can you throw me another pre -sun? This thing is just so ridiculously good in 1v1 situations with pretty much any same tier tank and some tier 6s as long as they're not that mobile because the traverse speed and power to weight ratio is so good you're almost always going to top speed and if you literally just hug them they're not going to get away so you just got to get so close stick the gun in the tank you want to be smelling the chocolate this guy is probably using on his leopard you just want to be right up against him the whole time. Don't let him get away at all. Just stick the gun in the tank and just follow him. 
and we'll just ignore that I'm using combat rations for Uber. Anyways, once you get used to the fact that you can just roll up to almost any fight, you can just out-circle them. Like, take this Wolverine, for example. This guy's probably thinking, okay, I got some better DPM, I can just take, keep it at range. Meanwhile, I'm recharging him like, LET'S GET READY TO RUMBLE! And I must have surprised this guy a lot. Like, he really must not have been expecting me, because he does not even get to shoot in this entire fight when you just kill him for full health. It's actually kind of funny that, uh, usually when I have to get clips for videos, sometimes it just takes forever, sometimes I don't get a clip, sometimes it just runs out of time and I can't bother to get a clip. But in this one, I actually had an overwhelming amount of clips to go through where just stuff like this happens, where you just stick to glue to the side of the tank. And this guy actually almost gets it by backing up towards the edge of the cliff so that I can't get around him, but then he stops. So as long as you can just stay behind them and no one interrupts your 1v1, you can always just... Wait, wait, wait a minute. As I was saying, this tank doesn't actually lose that many 1v1s, in fact, it actually is a really good stepping stone for learning other skills, like how to exploit destructible cover, to really surprise people. And trust me when I tell you, American tank destroyers will absolutely hate this tank if you drive it. None of them have good turret traverse, so you can literally just drive around them and hug them, and there's basically nothing they can do. I only took damage here because I was trying to get out of the way of the Wolverine, which in hindsight, I would have, I should have just taken 110 damage and that's it. But, he already hit his one shot that you're ever supposed to allow. So, he just misses that one and he's not going to get a second one. Because you can just stick to his side like glue. And he's not even going to get a second shot off because he doesn't have the turn traverse. It's just amazing like that. Some... 1v1s will be a little too easy sometimes if you're against a tank that doesn't really have a fighting chance. So sometimes you can make it more savage than it really needs to be. If you really feel like it. just gonna get it out of the way that you're gonna miss a lot. Like that's really any tank probably that I'm ever gonna play, but you're just gonna miss a lot. And you're also not gonna pen a lot, because the penetration is not that good. I've actually had games where I've had to just go and cap as our only chance of winning because I just can't pen the guy that's left. Unfortunately, sometimes you're just subject to driving around the map for five minutes until you finally spot that one group of three guys on three shots that you can charge in and kill at once. This tank can be a little annoying sometimes when games like this happen, because if you want to play it as gung-ho as I do, you don't want to be just sitting, not driving around, and sit wait a minute. What, what is that? Wh why is that? Why, what is... Just stop! I killed it, we're fine. Being given all this speed and traverse speed and acceleration and everything comes with the curse of wanting to use it all the time. Which makes it annoying to also try passive spotting like here. Since I'm the only light tank on this team, I've been subject by default to spot targets for the team. 
which goes well, honestly. It's not really a bad thing, and when you drive a light tank, you should probably expect that more often than not. But still, when you get a light tank that drives aggressively as this thing, you really want to just be driving aggressively. With that being said, sometimes, sometimes passive spotting really keeps you on your toes. Nerves of steel are required. And sure, you can do the whole light tank thing. It will work fine. You can have fun doing that, and people have fun doing that. You really will get your damage numbers up doing that. But at the same time, it's not very fun, is it? So, you get to this result screen, yeah, you get top XP, and wait a minute. Weren't all those guys on my flank? We spot the Skoda. If Skoda gets shot to pieces, because he doesn't know he's been spotted, or if he does, he's just trying to get to the other side as fast as possible. Okay, fine. Spot the Anko. Anko drives through the open because he's just trying to get to the flank and he gets spotted. He gets annihilated. So then we move up later, spot a Chaffee when we go into the bush. He's in cover. Nobody can shoot him. But that's three people on the flank that ended up with zero. Those guys probably spent longer in the queue than they did get single points of XP for it. And we're not even close to done yet. That's the 3485M. Then we move up even further. That's an SU-12244, who also got zero. And then we roll all the way up to the front, and we see a VK-3002M. So, this is nuts that all of that, all those guys got zero XP for this game, or zero damage from this game. Maybe I should do this more often, because that actually was pretty good. Well, that kind of trailed off. Maybe I should actually talk about what's bad about this tank. Um, well, there is one. The fuel tanks absolutely suck. Uh, that goes for Russian tanks in general, mostly the mediums, but the fuel tanks on this thing suck. I can take a hit, and uh, of course. Do you remember that E25 scene earlier in the video? Yeah, well, guess how that ends. I track this guy, drive up, stop, lag spike so that I can't actually keep driving, and then guess what? I was really not happy about that one. Alright, and time for the... Basically, I love it. It's a jack-of-all-trades kind of tank that goes fast, has great traverse, over 2,000 DPM on a tier 5 light tank, which is kind of sick when you think about it. It's got good enough armor, sort of, to deal with lower tier tanks as long as their guns utterly suck, like these Stuarts. But 
You can also challenge a KV-1 to a fight. You can shoot some heavies in the side, harass light tanks of the same tier and lower tiers and higher tiers even, sort of. You can use it as a bush tank, learn how bushes work, or know how bushes work and exploit that to just dunk on everybody because they have no idea where you are as you're shooting them, since your firing camo is really good. Then after, in the same battle, you go up to aggressive spot, find nobody, go all the way back across the map, and then shoot some heavies in the side from long range in the middle of nowhere because you can't be spotted sometimes. To the point where you can drive just through the middle of nowhere and spot a T-34 at 318 meters and not spotted. If you're evil enough, you can use it to also play with your food a little bit. Just gonna wait a little longer. And there we go. So what I'm gonna do at the end of these kind of review style videos is I'm going to show the best replay that I had in the tank. And if you don't want to watch it because it's unedited, you can skip to that time right there. But basically, this is gonna be an unedited thing of the best replay I ever had. So enjoy. <laughs> 